This is Makesh de Pompal. And this is Makesh de Pompal. This is downtown Lisbon. And this is downtown mini Lisbon. This is a beautiful hotel in Lisbon. This is a beautiful hotel in mini Lisbon. This is... <laughs> All right, you get the point. In the far corner of Portugal, you'll find a city some people call mini Lisbon. It has everything Lisbon has, but on a tiny scale. We are skeptical. I mean, 3 million people versus 20,000. Surely this town doesn't hold a candle, right? Yes, we have had you. Today, our epic road trip around Portugal and Spain actually is starting. Beautiful morning here in Lisbon. Checking out of Porto Bay, Liberdade. Incredible hotel. And today we're checking in to another incredible hotel at Villarreal Santo Antonio at the very border of Spain and Portugal. By Algarve. We have a three hour drive to mini Lisbon and to get there we are taking the bus. Kidding. We have of course rented a car. It's the best way to get around in Portugal. Muito obrigado. So, while Amelia is picking up our little dog, Lara, I am picking up our little car. And I had to take a taxi. Because here in Lisbon, taking a, an Uber or Bolt is becoming increasingly difficult. So it takes 17 minutes just to get the Uber back to the hotel. So we're already super, super late. I don't know if it's because of the insane fuel prices. Two euros for a liter of gas. What? We always like to rent an open car since Portugal is the land of sun. But this time we went for the cheapest possible option since our rental car budget is now going to petrol. Our research led us to Centauro, which we've never heard of. 226 euros for 16 days and then 116 euros on top because we're going two days to Spain. Now, I don't want to sound like a complainer, but if there's one industry that I hope soon to be revolutionized, it's a car rental industry. How can it take 20 minutes per couple to get their car. You have your name, your birth, your address, and, and payment. That's it. Somehow they, they keep just type, 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 type. What are they typing? I want to know. So um, I've waited one hour and 20 minutes. And apparently because I wasn't premium, everybody with a premium, which was most people, would just walk inside in front of me. So they would come with one of the big buses here <laughs> and then just walk straight in front of me. So technically I could be standing here the entire day if only enough premium customers came through. <laughs> Two hours later than anticipated. Breakfast box. Oh, I thank you so much. Sure. I love it. <laughs> so instead of leaving Lisbon around 8, we crossed the bridge at 9.30. Luckily, Lara was there to brighten the mood. Our amazing rental car already encountered its first problem. We have to change oil or check oil levels. That might as well be me having to solve a quantum equation. I wonder what happens if I just ignore it. <laughs> One eternity later. Oh, there it was. And then what? I don't know. I have no car code, okay? Well, we checked it. We have <laughs> and just like that, we arrived in mini Lisbon. Right off the bat, the Lisbon resemblance was easy to spot. Our hotel Grand House might as well be located on Avenida Liberdad. And in terms of the price, it sure felt like it. 260 euros per night is not cheap. But as it turns out, it was worth every penny. Check-in time was 3 o'clock, so we had a quick hotel tour before heading out. By the way, is it me or our hotel check-in times becoming later and later? Two decades ago, I remember it to be 12 or 1. Oh well, my father used to say that the joy of anticipation is the greatest form of pleasure. Cheers to being back on the road. Cheers and to being back in Algarve. I've missed Algarve more than I actually was aware of. We have two nights here at the Grand House and then we are going to a pot tell. It's basically 
the future we're visiting. We are going to Mavao, we are going to Castello Vid, we are going to Monsanto, Serra di Estrella, Viseo. There are so many cool places and some of them we've never been to. Lara, do you want to talk about Villa Real di Santo Antonio? Town is constructed in 1774, right after the 1755 earthquake. Finally, it was time to explore Lisbon's baby brother. And we were off to a good start as we were immediately greeted by this beautiful square. It was built by Marques de Pompal, who was one of the most important dudes in the history of Portugal. He was virtually the dictator of Portugal, but a highly productive one. He single-handedly rebuilt Lisbon after the earthquake, with the Pombeline style being the dominating architecture. In Baixa Lisbon, you have the best example of the Pompeline style, where especially the grid system is unique. Interestingly, this architectural style is also famous for being one of the first anti-earthquake designs, which obviously was a priority after the devastating 1755 earthquake. We loved this square so much that we decided to eat our lunch pack here. So Villa Real de Santo Antonio is not your average Algarvian vacation place. It's a very small town and most people would go to the big resorty kind of cities. For you and me, this is more our style because you are basically staying within culture, within Portuguese history. And one thing you know that you're in Algarve is that it's already t-shirt and actually short uh, weather. Suffice to say, we already liked Villarreal Santo Antonio. It's so different from the rest of Algarve. It's a calm little universe where your worries in life go to disappear. Monte Corto. That means fat mountain. But it's a beach. So now we don't have to smell of sweat. I want this one for my jewelry. Okay. We are here on a Monday and uh, this is definitely off season, not because it's Monday, but because we are in early February, no, early March. The consequences of being off season is that a lot of restaurants are not open. Tonight though, we're eating at the hotel. We were invited to eat there for free and we are paying to stay there, just FYI. 142,000 euros for a... Uh, Wow, 60 square meters, that's expensive. I've seen that there are quite a number of beach bars on the coastline of this city. But the coastline is two kilometers out of yeah. the city. So it's not a beach town. But yet again, it kind of is. From a bird's perspective, you can see how close you are to the beach. You have several beach clubs, bars and restaurants. Perhaps it isn't walking distance from downtown mini Lisbon, but a five to 10 minute drive will bring you to this long, beautiful sand beach. In other words, yes, Villarreal Santo Antonio does offer everything a beach hungry person demands. Is that a key in, 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 in uh, Algarve? No. No? Alentejo? No, uh, uh, Centro, Fatima. See, this is why we shouldn't overpack. Every time we travel to the mainland, we overpack. You and overpack. You overpack. You overpack. Well, you like it? <laughs> Our dog is a meerkat. Nine euros for six beautiful cereal plates. I am dying to see the room because this hotel is so beautiful. I actually texted them because I wanted to do a collaboration, but I never got a reply. Finally, it was time to check into the hotel. Our room was charming and beautiful with an interior design right up our alley. Lara was ecstatic and I immediately quality assured the bathtub. It was approved. What made Grand House special was the attention to detail. Everything is perfect and carefully curated to make you feel special. We truly felt at home as if we were in our beloved Lisbon. Det er små, lækre hoteller. Vi ser, at vi har aldrig set det på booking eller sådan noget. Og så isterning her. Ja, da han satte den på bordet, der var det også det første, jeg sagde. Så vi var lidt lidt reluctant at booke det hotel, fordi vi er 474 euro for to nights, plus 50. 
for Lara. But we really couldn't find any other hotel that allowed dogs. So we were like, okay, let's just go all in. And we certainly don't regret that. Did you know that one of the most famous writers and poets here in uh, Portugal actually wrote a story about this hotel? Fernando Pessoa. Yes. Cheers to more than two weeks of adventure, Jon. By the way, guys, this is our private rooftop. So you have uh, Spain over here. Wow. How beautiful, huh? <laughs> Don't worry, it's not straight down. Not only were we on our very own rooftop, we were also on cloud nine. Maybe it was the novelty of coming to a new place we haven't been. Maybe it was the excitement for our upcoming two weeks of adventure. Whatever the reason was, we loved this place. And with the Grand House dinner lined up, it was about to get even better. And while the chef is preparing our food, here's a reminder for everyone who's daydreaming about their next trip to Portugal. In 2020, we went on four incredible vacations with our travel partner, Sacris Vacations. We stayed at the best hotels and visited the best restaurants. With our personal human Wikipedia and chauffeur, Shuel, we had some amazing and true bucket list experiences. Now that traveling is back to normal, it's time to book your next dream trip right now. So send Patricia an email and she will take care of you. She literally doesn't stop at perfect. And perhaps I think she is the most proactive human we've ever met. Whatever you're looking for, she will make it happen. And even if you don't know what you're looking for, she will find it for you. The cool thing is that if you mention us, stay classy to Patricia, she will shave off 10% of your travel itinerary price. This is truly the best way to explore Portugal. Let's have some food. I think we're having an actual fine dining experience here at the hotel. I was just introduced to this, which is called the ham of the sea. And when I first saw it, I was sure it was gonna be a piece of ham. But in reality, this is dried tuna. But can we first cheer in this insane cocktail, mocktail? The bartender here is an artist. Can I just say that I feel like we're sitting in a movie scene, not a vlog scene, but a movie scene. Like um, an episode of Poirot, Phones Away. We're having a soda a la Tensiana, and this is one of the very typical dishes that we have also had when we did our food tour in Mmm, I like codfish. I think we can conclude that finally. It took me three years. Free food always tastes better, but this was truly a delightful taste bud massage. This meal was actually incredible. I get pure, authentic sudadis when I eat this. What this, is it? The dessert is, it's an interpretation of a very traditional Portuguese dessert. But in reality, it's a French toast with an amazing orange mousse on the side. And it brings me back to my childhood, to my mother's kitchen. I'm still blown away by the mocktails here. Our experience at this hotel is one of the reasons why we love traveling so much. We just love seeing other people having such passion for what they do. No matter how crazy of a world we live in, it restores our faith in humanity. In terms of food though, we're not sure Lara agrees. One thing we all agree on though, is that Villarreal Santo Antonio definitely qualifies as a mini Lisbon. Good night! If you'd like some more Algarve magic, here are the 8 best beaches for your next trip.